What's up guys? Today I got a little lesson about sway bars. Um, a lot of people um, think that, oh, let me just throw a big giant sway bar and there's no disadvantages to it. Well, I want to um, kind of show you that, you know, you got to be careful with your sway bar selections. You actually kind of want to, especially if you're tracking the car. Um, daily driving, it can also be dangerous just to throw a big giant sway bar on too because if you sometimes you might have to do like emergency maneuvers on the street and um, you need your car to be able to respond properly to any emergency maneuver you might need to do. You'll need to be losing traction or fishtailing um, everywhere. So yes, a sway bar can um, improve body roll, but it also can be what you could call a traction reducer as well. And I'll go over that today. All right guys, I'm trying to get better at making these videos a little shorter. So, all right, let's get down to nitty gritty sway bar. Uh, I'm gonna make use of these different colors. Here's the subframe. And you got a bushing and a bushing. All right, so when you have a body roll, you have a force here, and then you have the control arm and whatnot right here that connects to this. It's unsprung weight, it doesn't go anywhere because you know everything that's getting compressed is all up here. So that's what's getting compressed. And since this is attached to that, or the, the subframe is attached to what's getting compressed, you're basically, the subframe is what's pushing down right here. So on this bushing right here, there's a downward pull on it, but this doesn't go anywhere. It's attached to the wheel and the wheel is on the ground. So it's not going nowhere. So you have a force that pushes down here, which causes this to twist up. So that's how the sway bar works. So, but whatever happens on this side is also gonna happen on this side. So we have another force that happens on this side. And this is the disadvantage, or could say advantage to sway bars. Um, you could look at them as a traction reducer as well, not just something that emulate, eliminates body roll, but also you can use them to make like the rear end lose traction first before the front or if you want to make the front end lose traction before the rear. Um, reason being is because now since this which is connected to your wheel sorry that's an ugly wheel all right so that's connected to your wheel the wheel wants to lift up off the ground so now the ground is down here and you have this little space right here so now the wheel on the inside, so this is the outside of the turn right here, outside. And this is the inside of the turn. Turn. So that's your outside, this is the inside. On the inside wheel is being lifted up because the outside, the forces are compressing, causing the sway bar to come back like this. So I'm gonna show you guys a little, um, I'm gonna use like a little paper clip or whatnot to show you how um, the sway bar basically, or pretty much give you a 3D representation of this. Okay, so this is gonna be our sway bar and I'm going to apply a downward force right here where the bushing would be. And my finger's gripping it right here is the unsprung control arm that's you know past the spring rate so it's going to stay the same it's not going it's not being compressed downward but this is part of the body attached by the bushing so it will be so this is basically what happens this is the other side of the control arm so if i apply a downward force you see that look how the other side wants to turn up So that's what happens when a sway bar is having, um, is resisting the weight. It is twisting because 
it wants to go up like so and what you do to this side this side's going to do it's going to mimic it so that's pretty much what goes on when you have a sway bar and that's something you got to be aware of okay so after seeing that um we can determine that basically the sway bar is a torsion kind of like a spring so it should have a rate a rate of which how much pound force you need to apply in order to um, I guess you could say compress the bar you know with it compressing like this so um, this is a formula I found online that could help you calculate um, the pound foot of torque or actually pound inch sorry pound inch this is going to be in inches but you can convert that into feet so basically you'll get the measurement between this b and c and then you'll get the inner diameter if it's a um solid bar you'll use a um zero you'll get the outside diameter and then you plug it into this formula right here. So this will be 500,000 times, this is in parentheses, outside diameter to the fourth power minus inside diameter to the fourth power, parentheses. And then you'll divide, parentheses, 0.4244 times A squared times B, parentheses, plus parentheses 0.2264 times c cubed and then parentheses so that way you can calculate your sway bar length after you calculate your spring rates that way after you let's say do a little bit of track driving um, you can kind of see instead of okay let me strengthen my uh, spring rates you can say um, let me um, you know put a bigger diameter bar so I can reach um, that spring rate that came in my calculations but I didn't want to use it because it would have been too stiff for me and I want to be able to go over bumps better yada 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 etc etc it might be a bumpy track how can I reach that um, pound force without having to put um, tougher or stiffer springs on so you can use the sway bar in that manner also think about um, you know, I want the rear end to rotate more and I could use a little bit of force, but I don't want too much. How much is, you know, to where I won't have too much of a stiff rear end, but I can get the rear end to kick out a little bit more because once again, on the inside tire, it lifts up when the sway bar is being compressed, it lifts the inside tire up. Um, keep in mind when you're stiffening up sway bars, that is something that happens. So don't just go all out on your sway bars because you know that can cause loss of traction when you're only using three wheels versus all four wheels so just keep that in mind when you're making your sway bar selections and um, good luck to you guys uh, and i'll holler at you guys in the next video